Hello, this is Dr. Ryan Kazumi. In this video, I'm going to talk about the sinus sleeve bone grafting for placement of dental implants, what it is, when it's needed, and exactly how it's done. When teeth are lost in back of the upper jaw, the floor of the sinus cavity, which lies right above the roots of the molars and often the second premolars, undergoes various degrees of resorption. Often the sinus floor begins to migrate downward as the bone remodels following teeth extractions. This results in loss of bone height and inadequate support for a dental implant. The migration of the sinus floor can be minimized if the site is grafted at the time the tooth is extracted. Without such bone grafting, however, the sinus floor begins to migrate downward and limits the amount of available bone for future placement of dental implants. Because the bone in this area is of relatively low density and it receives the maximum forces from the chewing, it's critical that the dental implants that are selected have adequate height and width for proper support. Placement of short dental implants have higher risk of failure and should generally be avoided. The amount of the available bone must first be accurately determined by a cone beam CT scan, also known as a CBCT. The use of conventional dental x-rays or Panorex by themselves are inadequate for such diagnosis and do not provide the necessary information for proper planning. The CBCT provides a precise and accurate image of the bone height and width and helps the surgeon to determine the size of the implant and whether any grafting is necessary or not. I recommend a minimum bone height of 10 millimeters and a bone width of 8 millimeters for support of implants in the back region of the upper jaw. With minimal bone loss, the surgeon can generally place the implant without any bone grafting. If there is a moderate loss of bone, the surgeon may be able to place the implant and perform the sinus lift bone grafting at the same time. With more severe bone loss, it is generally recommended to stage the treatment. First augment the bone and allow to mature for about six months and then place the dental implant as a second stage. For small amounts of bone height augmentation, an internal sinus lift procedure may be done directly through the site of the implant preparation. Typically, a 1 to 3 millimeters of additional bone height can be achieved with this technique. For sites with significant loss of bone height requiring larger bone augmentation, a conventional sinus lift procedure is indicated. With this approach, a small access is created on the side of the sinus and a pocket is carefully created where the bone graft material is placed. The materials for sinus lift bone grafting may be obtained either from a bone bank or harvested from the specific area of the jawbone or used in combination of both. The surgeon will determine the best type of bone graft material and the technique based on the size and location of the sinus lift procedure. Once grafted, the site is allowed to heal for about six months before the implants are placed or restored if the implants have already been placed at the time of the grafting. Sinus sleeve procedure is a safe and predictable procedure with minimal risks of complications when performed properly. Infection is the only potential risk which can be minimized by post-operative antibiotics and strict adherence to uh, post-operative instructions. Some swelling is expected, which typically resolves in seven to 10 days, and the pain, relatively minor, is effectively managed with common uh, analgesics. Sinus lift procedure is considered a relatively minor procedure with surprisingly little pain and a rapid recovery, and most patients can get back to work within a day or two. To give some perspective, I often use the extraction of an impacted wisdom tooth as comparison to sinus lift bone grafting. Almost everyone has their wisdom teeth removed, and there is hardly any hesitation about it. In fact, dentists recommend it in almost every individual. So let's compare a sinus lift graft procedure to extraction of an impacted wisdom tooth. 
When we compare the two procedures, we see that patients have practically the same experience. In fact, there is more swelling and pain associated with extraction of a wisdom tooth rather than a sinus lift procedure. In many ways, the sinus lift procedure is gentler and less traumatic than a tooth extraction. It is also important to note that sinus lift bone grafting, while a simple concept, is rather a very technique sensitive procedure and it requires advanced knowledge, skills, and techniques performed by experienced oral surgeons.